Welcome to Street Knowledge with Chris Graham. Welcome to the podcast. It's Monday. We're going to talk NASCAR with Rod Mullins. And up in New Hampshire yesterday, Rod, Christopher Bell punched his ticket to the 2022 playoffs. And um, there was a lot else going on, but uh, Bell with the win, uh, it looked like to me a lot of the racers in the top, uh, you know, top part of the the finish there were tr- trying to do their best to manage fuel, to manage their tires. They all did so. Nobody ran out of gas or anything. And um, Bell was pretty, what, what turned out to be pretty much an easy win. He led the last 40 or so laps and Chase Elliott coming in second, but Elliott never really challenged him down the stretch. No, I mean, Elliott was leading there at one point, but then when Bell took the lead after that, there was, you know, there was no getting it back. And uh, this had to be one of the, if you want to call it this, one of the better strategy races, I think, more than anything else. Uh, New Hampshire's always kind of ended up being that way. Either fuel mileage or tires is what it's always ended up being. Uh, but we saw a lot of things happen in this race yesterday. Uh, of course, Christopher Bell, you know, guys, I'm just going to tell you right now, this is the situation. Um, I've been calling it now for about the past two or three months. Uh, it's now starting to sink in with some of these other sports writers and some of these other people out there. We are going to have a dog race to the very end as to who's going to get into the playoff picture. And Christopher Bell just muddied up the water that much more yesterday. So he becomes the 14th, as I call it, as I think I'm right, 14th different winner on the season this year, wins this race, punches his ticket, but still... He's got to have some good races in between here, or he could get knocked out of it. And right now, the odd man uh, looking into the playoff picture is Martin Truex Jr., and he's only in leading, oh, I think by about uh, 40, maybe 50-some points over Kevin Harvick. And Kevin Harvick hasn't won a race this year. So we're just seeing a lot of things starting to just come together here to what could be this this final six races and it's going to be unreal what we're going to see on the track. Yeah, I'm glad you pointed that out about uh, uh, the the win yesterday. Not necessarily punching a ticket for Bell. I mean, Bell's he's he looks pretty solid to me right now. Right. He, with the win, he moved into eighth place because he'd been doing well points wise until right. yesterday. Just didn't have the win. He's at five seventy in eighth place, and the 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 winner with the least points right now is Chase Briscoe down in fourteenth place with four sixty five. Briscoe better watch his back. Yeah, yeah, that's that right. Goes. Briscoe, maybe Reddick at 474, Suarez at 479, even Kurt Busch at 485, and also Cindric at 489. I think at some point, you know, because um, when you look down, if someone like a Ryan, well, if Ryan Blaney or Martin Truex Jr., they're in 15th and 16th right now. Mm-hmm. Um, if they get a win, obviously that does them great because they already have a lot of points accumulated. If they right. had a win to that, they're going to move way up the ladder there. But you mentioned Harvick, you, you know, Eric Amarola, Eric Jones, Austin Dillon, Michael McDowell, Justin Haley. Maybe maybe more Harvick, Amarola, maybe Jones on the fringe of this. But if they get a win, yeah, if you're Briscoe or Reddick or Suarez, you better be you better be watching your back and getting some points yourself the next few races because, um, uh, yeah, the, the way things are working out right now, if, if we only have – if we have three more winners, that's right. 17 winners. There's only 16 spots. So if – if our trend continues here and we have some more first-time winners this season, certainly then uh, things get very interesting before the end of August. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. And, you know, I w- you know Christopher Bell, I'm, I guess what I'm trying to say is with this one win, uh, I guess, uh, theme or something like that, what I'm trying to get across to people is this. One win may not get you in. That's all I can say about it because you're, we're at a situation, we're at a point right now, and this, to me, has been one of the best playoff scenarios I think NASCAR could have ever possibly wished for this entire season. They've been hoping for something that would um, garner some response from the fans and at least uh, light a fire under some of these drivers to see where, what they're going to do, how desperate they're going to be in order to get a win or to try to get those points. You mentioned Martin Truex Jr. You know, Martin Truex Jr., he didn't hurt himself any yesterday by winning uh, both stages. 
that helped him more than anything else. Winning those stages help a lot. You know, if you're, you're able to pick up a stage win, those are important points any way you look at it. But you've got to have those wins down the line too. So like you said, uh, Daniel Suarez is one of those people It's kind of on that bubble right now, kind of looking at that bubble. And uh, I know that uh, this past week with some, um, some other people that was on a couple of NASCAR sites, um, I kind of engaged with some people out there and they were just – they were mad. They were mad over Kevin Harvick. And I just told him, I said, unless Kevin Harvick is able to pull off a win, he will not make the playoffs this year. There's just no other way around it. Uh, people are saying, well, that's whose fault is it and stuff. It's nobody's fault. I mean, you can say the driver is part of it, but the team, I don't. I just don't think the team has put this, you know, program or at least Kevin Harvick's team where they need to be this year. And uh, the same could be said all through Stuart Haas Racing. Um, I would expect probably at the end of this season, there's going to be a massive shakeup at Stuart Haas. Uh, something along the lines of putting people in places where they're going to win or they're going to be proven winners to where they can pull some things off. Um, you know, it's it's just everything is up in the air at this point. And, I mean, you even had another feud start on the, on the track yesterday with uh, Austin Dillon and Brad Keselowski. And Brad Keselowski just went off, and he told him, he says, he bumped into me all over the track back there in the back. And Austin Dillon and him both have said, uh, you know, I don't like the way he races me. And Austin Dillon, especially of Brad Keselowski, I don't like the way he, he – but the I guess the, the more statesman sort of thing to say about this is the way that Brad Keselowski and Austin Dillon both said in post-race interviews, um, are you going to talk to Austin or are you going to talk to Brad? Uh, we'll talk in private. I'm like, and, yeah, we'll talk in private. So that's 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 a good sign there. They can still talk all the they can talk all the trash they want to in private, but yeah, that at least yeah. uh, gets, gets it out of the public eye. Hey, getting back to Harvick for a second, you know, you look at his his numbers this year: five top fives, eleven top tens, mm -hmm. no wins, and right. that's that's huge. And yeah, he's 68 points out of 16th place right now. Win is essential for him. Um. But uh, for Christopher Bell, uh, he this this is this could be a breakthrough win for him. He had yep. he had raced well at New Hampshire uh, on the Xfinity Series. He'd won there three times. He finished, I think, second last year on the on the Cup Series. And so, getting the win yesterday might you know, of course, it gets him in the in the playoff, likely in the playoff field for this year. But um, I mean, this is this has got to be something for him to make you know to build on for the future as well. Well, it does, and it especially cements him in a better position uh martin Truex is already signed they don't have to worry about that martin Truex is going to be with jgr racing joe gibbs racing again uh here's the big question mark uh christopher bell kind of with this win kind of solidifies his spot where he's supposed to be at at joe gibbs racing the only big question is right now where is Kyle Busch going to end up? Because Kyle Busch is still in negotiation, supposedly, with Joe Gibbs Racing, and he's also been talking to other race teams. Now, whether he's talking to other race teams to see if he can get Toyota or Joe Gibbs Racing to come up with some kind of sponsor that's going to give him a big contract signing, I don't know. But uh, I don't think there's anybody in the garage area that's uh, – they'd love to have Kyle Busch. Uh, the thing is – how much money are they going to have to give up to get him? And then the next thing after that, who's going to be able to put up with him and his attitude as long as he's been there and everything in the in the garage, what, 15 years, I think, with Joe Gibbs Racing. So there's where the, the, the problem lies. Christopher Bell has always been one of these drivers to me that I think is just – it was going to take time for him to prove himself. Um, he was a great driver on the Xfinity series. He did well there. And then when they brought him up to the cup series, uh, it was kind of one of those things that that's when they uh, cut loose Daniel Suarez. Daniel Suarez was supposed to have been this great driver. It was coming over to Joe Gibbs racing. And really they just didn't have it. He didn't have it at all until he bumped around and finally landed out of all places track house racing and that's where he's at now and he's actually pulled off a win this year but so christopher bell is in one of these positions that uh i think it just solidifies his um i guess his resume uh in a lot of ways with some of these other teams that when the ch uh, the opportunity comes he's 27 he's still got a lot of racing life left in uh, left in him um he could still stay at joe gibbs for a long time or he could go to some other team and he could really make a splash there once he gets there 
with that win, he moved into eighth place. He's a uh, third among the one uh, win one time winners this year mm -hmm. in points. If he move, if he gets another win, uh, he he moves up even more. Um, you know, Chase Haley gets the second place finish yesterday. Right. Chase still leads the the circuit. He has three wins. He's uh, he's on top of the point standings. Mm -hmm. Um, Bubba Wallace finished third. B Bubba is still way out of the playoffs right now, and even if he got a win, he would still ha he'd still need probably another win to, right. to solidify a bid. But it was a good run for him. Now he finished third. It sounds it, 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 that sounds better than the way it things. He was ten seconds behind or so, uh, mm -hmm. and really never closed the gap in the last forty laps. But finishing third. It was a pretty good run for him yesterday. Yeah, it was. Finishing third, it was his second top five effort of the season, but his first top ten result since a tenth place finish at Kansas just eight races ago. And, you know, he couldn't say enough about his team. You know, this is a team that has been right now, Freddie Kitchens and him, oh gosh, the the words that were exchanged on the radio here a couple of races ago and how bad, uh, you know, Bubba was going on on the radio uh, he kind of turns around and he said something that I thought kind of caught my attention. He's just proud of the team, proud of myself, proud of everybody at the shop. It's been helping me the last month or so to come out with a top five. And then he said this, this sport humbles you, so there's really no surprises. Have to keep the task at hand, be mindful of your surroundings and do your job. So, you know, I, I think that he's starting to get a little bit more of a um, little bit more uh, modest so to speak, he's getting a little bit more, hey, I'm I'm starting to do this. It's starting to come together, but got to have some patience. And I start to ask myself, too, here after a while, how much patience is Michael Jordan, Denny Hamlin, going to have with him before it's over with? He needs to have some good runs uh, because – Guess what? We're going to have a new driver there in 2023, or I should say 2024, when uh, the big announcement came this past week and we weren't on. It, this happened really at the point we weren't on uh, last week of, well, none other than Tyler Reddick signing with 2311 Motorsports. And it was a shock. I think a lot of people were taken by surprise by this. And I think it also muddied the water up so bad on some of this stuff of how not to handle silly season. Uh, yeah, uh, who knows? Uh, Kurt Busch may be the odd man out after 2023. He may be going to retire. Who knows what's going to happen there? But that was the big surprise right there with Tyler Reddick saying he's going from Richard Childress Racing. Going to race one more year with Richard Childress Racing. What do you do as a lame duck driver at Richard Childress Racing for one more year. And I know that Tyler Reddick is a dedicated driver. He wants wins. But, you know, when you've got that carrot out there dangling in front of you for 2024, and you're like, eh, I think I may, may just kick it into cruise control. That's almost the way it is. That's almost the way it seems he's going to do this season or the 2023 season. Um, you know, he didn't – I don't know. Let's see. Let me look here and see where he finished. 21st in the race yesterday uh, there at New Hampshire. So, you know, and he – you know, he finished running and so forth, but, you know, not a good race for him right there in that in that aspect. I'm trying to imagine a, a athlete in another sport, you know, uh, who, who would sign a free agent deal with another team two years down the road, you know, yeah. and, and they have to play a whole nother year plus uh, with the team they're with now. And you're just thinking, yeah, all right, well, yeah, I'll try. I mean, I, I, don't, I wouldn't mind winning a World Series or a Super Bowl, but – if things start going south next year, you know, early next year, middle of next year, you know, you're right. He's got another job lined up. And yep. so, you know, that's when you start wondering, you know, you know, he'll come out the gate in Daytona next year doing pretty well. I'm sure, you know, going hard, yeah. hard all out. And, but um, you know, you get to May and June and if he's, you know, down on the points, everything else, does he just mail it in? I think that's gotta be a big concern there. Well, this reminds me a lot of the Morgan McClure situation that happened uh, right after Davy Allison's death, and I think that was back about 93 or 94 in that neighborhood, 93, I believe. And in that uh, in that time, we saw Alan Kowicki uh, pass away that same year with a uh, from a helicopter crash near Bristol Motor Speedway. Then you saw Davy Allison get killed in a helicopter crash at Talladega Super Speedway. And then the seat was wide open. Who knew who was going to go in that seat? And then out of the out of just nowhere, here came Ernie Irvin, who had already won a Daytona 500, had been kind of dominant on the track, sort of a 
Well, as we compare it now to today, Ross Chastain, an aggressive driver out there on the track. Some of the drivers liked him. Some of the drivers did not. And so here he is, and he's being courted by Robert Yates Racing to run that Haviland 28 car. And finally, he says, you know, I'm, you know, I'm, I've, I'm going to quit. I'm just going to quit driving in one sense for Morgan McClure. And that's what he did. He was not turning in some of his best numbers. Uh, he had been dominant, but that had also split that team wide open. And then by the time that they got to the August race at Bristol, uh, Ernie Irvin was booed when they came, when they brought him out on stage because Morgan McClure was a local product there having their race team there in Abingdon, Virginia. And then like four or five laps into it, Ernie Rex. And then a lot of people at that point said, yep, that's what he's done. He's thrown this in order for this to happen. And then it was temper tantrums on the track. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to get into this car and I'm going to run today. And, you know, comments from the team manager saying, you've signed a contract. You're supposed to be in this car. You're supposed to be racing. It was childish to all degrees. But eventually they released him. And the next thing you know, he started winning when he was at Robert Yates Racing. So there's some similarities there with it. Um, I don't know if you can really call uh, any kind of major correlation between uh, the two events. But still, um, silly season is kind of a dirty season sometimes. And this year, it got really dirty. And I think the, gosh, best way I can describe it, the arrogance that Denny Hamlin had when he made the announcement and he switched on, and it's like in a Zoom conference, and he switches on, and there's Tyler Reddick's nose, forehead, and eyes there on the camera until they finally get him into focus. Uh, I think a lot of people were taken aback by that, and Denny Hamlin's like, he's ours, 2024, he's ours. What about, you talking about silly season and childish, uh, I'll bring up our, our, our one of our favorite topics, Kyle Busch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And Joe Gibbs racing over the weekend now. So Kyle is saying he is shopping himself to other teams. And Joe Gibbs on his side is saying, I, I can't believe, I'm surprised we haven't signed Kyle for, for next season. So what is going on there? I don't know. I, you know, I don't know if this is, if this is just something staged, if this is something just to, uh, just to increase the popularity of the sport by following Kyle Bush and see how the contract deal is going to go. Um, I hate to compare it in this way, but it's almost like Ben Affleck and Jennifer, uh, Jennifer Affleck. Now I call her Jennifer Affleck, but, uh, JLo, I mean, it's one of those things of, you know, they're going to eventually, you know, they're going to get married, but you just nah, don't know when it's going to happen. Well, it happened this past weekend. So I think before it's over with, there's something going to happen. Toyota will not let him go. I don't think Toyota is going to let him go when you've won 60 races. And majority of them have been in a Toyota. And then you're out there representing that brand plate that's out there. And, you know, I know the old moniker used to be win on Sunday, sell on Monday. But uh, Kyle, Kyle Bush keeps that name of Toyota and himself out there on a, on a very regular basis, one way or the other. Um, yeah, I'm kind of surprised that they haven't signed him by this time. But um, Joe Gibbs, I'm pretty sure, knows what he's doing. But Kyle Busch probably thinks he, he's got one over on the old man. But, you know, uh, you've got to coach the Washington Redskins at least to have some experience to know uh, when you're out of the league and when you can play and when you can't play and all this other stuff. So now we've brought another little colorful uh, description of uh, football into the racing picture, I guess. Yeah, yeah. What's you know, Gibbs says he's surprised. Uh, I'm reading a quote here from Kyle Bush saying a new contract will be nice sooner rather than later. And then yet, okay, so if you're if you're there, uh, I know I know that the, uh, you know they're trying to find a new sponsor, and that probably complicates things a little bit. But yeah. I think it, you mentioned 60 wins, two two cup championships. Kyle Bush, they can find a sponsor for Kyle Bush if they really want to. So yeah, they can. I mean, and I th he has said that. He wants to race as long as he can, but I think he wants to retire from Joe Gibbs racing. But there is so much internal conflict that's been going on. Of course, he's got a new crew chief, I think, uh, this past year. He and the crew chief that was uh, wanting some races last year uh, or the year before, they did not see eye to eye on things, and he was replaced right before the season started. So there's there's some internal strife going on. I don't think we're really catching all of it and know what's fully going on down at Joe Gibbs Racing. But, 
You know, only time will tell. Somebody will bring it out. Somebody will say, this is what's going on at, at Joe Gibbs Racing. And then again, it may be just one of those gentlemanly sort of agreements of you don't tell and I won't tell. And that may be what it ends up being before they sign this contract. I'm looking at the schedule. We got six races left until the playoffs. And so as we talked earlier in the podcast, there's a chance for someone else to inject their you know way into the playoff chase. Uh, somebody from that list of, of drivers who haven't won yet. We've got 14. Um, this weekend, the chance is in Pocono, 3 yep. o'clock on USA Network. Um, what can we expect this weekend? Pocono, we're going to expect a race sort of like what we did at New Hampshire. It's going to be a, a fuel mileage. Uh, there's going to be a thing about the tires, but more importantly, it's going to be about fuel mileage. And we're going to see who is able to calculate and able to get that final drip or drop into that gas tank and who's going to be able to make it the rest of the way. Um, you know, there's some people, Ryan Blaney, this is one that I've got an idea that I think Ryan Blaney could come up with a win this weekend. Um, you know, he's not had a good season. He's been up, he's been down, but uh, he needs a win. And, you know, a win could put him within reach, could get him in into the playoff picture. Uh, but, you know, I, it's been a good track for him. He's won there before. Um, you know, I think that's that's a positive right there for at least – uh, Penske Motorsports getting Ryan Blaney into the uh, winner's circle uh, for the first time this season or in in the, this past season. But if you look at the rest of the some of the drivers, I really wouldn't count out Ross Chastain at this point. Ross Chastain is one of these drivers that I think is going to be going for everything he can. And hey, if he ends up getting three wins, chokes everybody else off out of the out of the whole playoff picture and knocks somebody else out, he's not worried about it because. He's wanting to make an impact just the same way that Trackhouse Racing has wanted to make an impact into this sport, and they've certainly done so this past season. So there, there's two of my picks right there who might be into the running of this. Um, Eric Jones could be in there. I think Eric Jones might have a good race. Chris Busher is another one. Uh, the Fords have run good at uh, Pocono before. Chris Busher has been so close so many times here this past season. I think he ran a top five or top ten this past season. Uh, that would be a bright spot. What's uh, been a very uh, tumultuous year for Roush Fenway Keselowski Racing. So that's another one there. Um, I, I don't count out Kyle Larson, and I don't count out William Byron before it's over with. Um, it, these guys have gone through some uh, some bad streaks, and I want to say Alex Bowman too. Alex Bowman's not been racing well here as of late. Uh, this would be one of those races that they could – you know, pretty much change the aspect of their season here as they get into this final stretch of these playoff races and everything. So uh, I'm telling you, uh, Pocono will have surprises like it always has had surprises, like deer jumping across the track going almost 200 miles an hour and deer just traipsing along on the back stretch back there like nobody's business. Uh, just the same way it's done in Virginia when deer run out in the road on you, they're just kind of walking out kind of easy and then by the time you round that curve, it's too late. Well, it could be too late if if deer uh, deer get out on the track this time around. That happened, gosh, that happened almost 30 years ago with Kyle Petty. And Kyle Petty said, did you see that? There was a deer out on the track. And that's how remote the Poconos and Pocono Raceway is. That is frightening. Anybody yeah. who's, you know, if you're going 50 miles an hour down the road and, and you're uh, and you see a deer, it's frightening enough. Uh, I've hit a, I've hit a deer. It's been a few years now. Right at a deer crossing sign. I should have been. I should have been paying attention. That's where the deer are told to cross, right? So that's right. Uh, but uh, you know, if you're going 200 miles an hour, it's just it's that's that's absurd. So yeah. Um, well, Rod, as always, thank you for your time and your insight into NASCAR. We we'll look forward to talking to you again next week. Appreciate it, Chris. Thanks.